Hello and welcome to Dushti IAS in News. My name is Neil. The topic which we are going to discuss is out there in news because there has been a diplomatic storm. A storm, even if in a proverbial teacup, it has been there because several countries have said that they are going to boycott the Beijing Olympics. We will discuss what it indicates, but this is how we will proceed with the discussion. We will discuss the news. We will know what exactly diplomatic boycott entails. We will know about the reasons behind this boycott. We will know the history of these boycotts, the impact, positive or negative, or if any at all, such boycotts have on geopolitics. And then we will try to reach a conclusion. Then you will have a question to practice your answer writing on. Moving forward, this was the news. The news was that Beijing Winter Olympics is going to be boycotted by United States, Australia, Britain, and Canada. We will know why this boycott was called for. But first of all, let us know something about the Beijing Olympics of, Olympics of 2022. This Olympics is scheduled from 4th to 20th February 2022. These are the Winter Olympics and not the more famous uh, cousin of theirs, Summer Olympics. These are the Winter Olympics. The theme is Together for a Shared Future. Quite ironic motto uh, of this Olympic. The mascot is Bing Win Win. Bing refers to ice, when is a reference to children. So this is the mascot of these, these Chinese Olympics, the Beijing Olympics. Now, why this diplomatic boycott has been called for? First of all, what is this diplomatic boycott? Why it is called diplomatic boycott or why it is not being called outright boycott? The reason is because in a diplomatic boycott, only the high ranking officials which or who usually accompany the team the delegation which is going to participate in these games they don't go along with the participating delegations so basically the players are still going to participate they are free to participate at least but the high ranking officials the diplomatic officials they are not going to accompany the team so it will prevent only the government officials from attending the games and that is why it has been called diplomatic boycott. Now the reasons behind the boycott, reasons are political. What are those political reasons? These countries uh, who have called for this boycott, they accuse China of human right abuses. Which kind of human right accuses you would ask? Human right accuses first of all related to genocide and crimes against humanity in the Xinjiang province of China. Xinjiang province lies in the western part of the China and there live the community of Uyghur and other Muslim communities. They also reside there. It has been said that China is committing genocide or crimes against humanity in that province. That is why these countries have called for boycott to put some pressure over the Chinese to rectify their behavior in those provinces. Now, this call was sharpened, it got more edge after a tennis player, Peng Shui, she accused a former top government official of Chinese Politburo, the top agency uh, which uh, has control, which exerts supreme control over the Chinese political system. She accused uh, that person of harassment, of sexual harassment. So, thereafter, this boycott gained momentum. Initially, it was called off, uh, called for by USA and then other countries joined in. Recently, the ace American ice dancer, uh, she has also called for this boycott. On this topic of human rights violation, she has said that it's terrible, it's awful, means that she hasn't minced uh, any words uh, in criticizing the behavior of the Chinese. Now, what the International Olympic Committee is saying, they are saying that games are apolitical. They should not be used as a platform to convey any political message. So their role is quite neutral in this whole episode. On the other hand, Women Tennis Association, it has suspended all tournaments in China. Why? Keeping in the light of the accusations raised by Peng Shui. Moving on forward, it is not the first time that such boycotts are occurring in the history of the Olympics. Before that also, in 2014, in very recent history, President Obama and, and then Vice, Vice President 
Joe Biden skipped the Sochi Olympics in Russia. Why? Because it was said that Russia is cracking down on gay rights, on the, uh, on the rights of LGBTQ communities. And that is why in this light, uh, so many countries, the US, France, Germany, they did not send their top ranking officials. So it was also a full-fledged diplomatic boycott of those Olympics held in Russia. Now, experts also pointed out that that uh, boycott was potentially motivated by the fact that Russia had given asylum to Edward Snowden and that had irked USA and that is why those Olympics were boycotted. So, there were always, there have always been a set of reasons. They, they never, in the history of such boycotts, one reason uh, precipitated such boycott. There were always a host of complex reasons that were playing in the background. Similarly, the first such case of major boycotts occurred during 76, 80 and 84. In 76, Montreal Summer Olympics were boycotted. Why? Because a New Zealand rugby team had participated uh, in a tournament in South Africa. You would ask why, what was the problem? Now, South Africa practiced apartheid. Apartheid was a policy of discrimination or segregation of blacks and whites practiced in the country of South Africa. So, the countries, the world was uh, putting pressure on the South African government to discontinue this policy and so nobody was sending their team to South Africa. However, New Zealand rugby team was sent there and therefore, several countries of the world boycotted the Montreal Summer Olympics to take a position against such behavior of both South Africa as well as of New Zealand which had sent its team there. Now, as we said, one of the biggest boycotts were successfully done, was successfully done in 1980 Moscow Summer Olympics. It was boycotted by more than 60 countries led by USA. Why? Because it was that year, around that year, when Soviet Russia had invaded Afghanistan. So, to take a stand against such expansionist policies of Soviet Russia, the Moscow Summer Olympics were, were boycotted. Now, uh, as a response to it, 1984 Los Angeles Summer Olympics, which were being held at Los Angeles, that is United States of America, Un Soviet Union and the countries influenced by Soviet Union, which were 12 in number, they said that we are not sure of the security conditions uh, in the US and that is why we are also going to boycott the uh, US Olympics, Los Angeles Olympics. So, this has been the history of uh, boycotts. So, the question arises that do such boycotts have an impact? Now, the answer is mixed. Let us see how. The boycott of the Moscow Games, it did not had any effect on Soviet foreign policy. As we know, even after the boycott which happened way back in 1980, Soviet Russia continued to occupy and influence Afghanistan for so many more years to come. So, such sweeping boycotts are mostly ineffective. But do they don't they have any effect? They have but mostly on the sports persons who miss this platform to showcase their abilities, to showcase their talent for which they have practiced for most of their lifetime. Also, the hostility of the uh, nations, uh, in this case, uh, China on one side and several European and US on the other side, several European countries and the US on the other side, they can make for some uncomfortable moments for the American delegation if it goes to the uh, to that Olympics because officials are not going to go there. The uh, American delegation will consist, if it goes, only of the players. So, it can lead to some uncomfortable moments for that team. It may also influence their performance. But even this impact can't be called a major impact from perspective of geopolitics or uh, any other political reason. So, on the basis of this, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, that there is a complex relationship between sports and foreign policies. Several countries employ sports to convey a certain message, but it is not always uh, of complete surety. It cannot be ensured that the message is can be effectively conveyed. That message can, ha uh, can have any real sense, uh, especially if it is being conveyed by boycotting a sports event. Second thing, for example, in this case, now again, like it happened way back in 1980 and 84, it can happen again that this time the US and several European countries are boycotting the Beijing Olympics. 
Now China is saying, several newspapers in China are arguing that we should boycott the Olympics which are going to be held at Los Angeles in 2028 as a reprisal, as a response. Also, such boycotts, if they have an impact, is on the lives of a sports person, on their futures, on their legacy, which they are in which they are completely invested. So it affects only athletes and the sports person future for sure. And then the sense of unity, which is what sports is all about, which is what such events are all about, that sense of unity will be most affected by such boycotts. So we have concluded. Now you have a question to practice your answer writing on. Question is, in view of boycott of Beijing Olympics, explain the boycott diplomacy and its impact. So that was all for this episode of a news. We will meet again in the next episode. Stay tuned.